What's up, you guys? It's Adana. So I know that you are in the swing of things. CASPA has recently opened up. So you are in the throngs of your PA school application. And some of you may be realizing, hmm, I need to study for my GRA because there are a lot of schools that I'm trying to apply to that requires it and I don't have my GRA. So if that is you, or if you're thinking about becoming a PA and you want to kind of just get a head start and start studying for your GRE, this video is for you. I'm going to be talking about a particular grad prep. Um, and so if you are interested in hearing more about ways that you can benefit in your study plan, let's get into the video right now. What's up you guys, it's Sedona. welcome back to my channel. Okay, so as I said, we're gonna be talking about grad school prep specifically for the GRE. So if you are in um, undergrad and you're trying to apply to any graduate program, uh, usually you're required to do the GRE. And so you're gonna to have to do some grad prep, which is pretty ironic because the product that I'm gonna be talking about today is called Grad Prep. Okay, so this video is sponsored by Grad Prep. They wanted me to kind of look at this um, particular prep program that they have and review it. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So I uh, full disclosure, you guys. So I've already kind of like gone in, put in my information, and I actually like went through the practice tests already. So I kind of know the flow of things just to be a little bit more familiar. But I had to make this video over again because I wanted to go through like an actual test and just kind of see how it was. Now, obviously, I'm not going to go through all of the questions because there is quite a few, which is very beneficial when you are studying for your GRE. OK, so GRE being that general general um, exam, standardized exam that you have to take to get into most grad schools. Um, and for PAs, uh, a lot of our programs are requiring or recommending the GRE. Now, there is some other tests that are coming in to play, like the PA CAT. Um, some schools will even accept the MCAT, but again, ironically enough, grad school has uh, prep for the MCAT and LSAT as well, if you're interested in that. So. Here on my screen, you can see it says, hello, Donna, that's me. All right. Um, and I did put in like, you know, oh, I wanted to take my GRE in like 60 days or something like that. And so it has this nice little neat countdown here on the screen that says like you have 54 days until your test. So you can really plan out exactly like what you want to do, how you want to actually attack studying for your exam. Now the GRE is both verbal, quantitative, and analytical with respect to the writing. And so they have aspects of all of those different um, GRE sections for you. Uh, here, let's see how many tests we have. One, two, three, four, five, practice tests, six, seven, eight seven so there's seven practice tests and then there's a sample test and i just did want i wanted to like mention that you can get like there is a free like kind of trial that you can get so you can see it and and test it out and test your knowledge out to see if this is what you want to use in your study prep okay so it shows you that i finished the practice test because i was like going through to see if i still had it i don't <laughs> I don't, but no, that's neither here nor there. Um, the practice test had 12 questions in it. It had six um, analytic, six quantitative and six GRE questions, okay? I did poorly. I think I had like two out of 12 or three out of 12, and they pretty much, no, I think it might have been three out of 12, and two came from like the verbal and one came from the quant and so you know quantitative section is the one there that you really kind of are going for that you have to pass it's the one that is all like heavy in math and like the sciences and stuff and so just if that is your area then stick to the quant okay it has some additional resources down here where you can do like a quantitative comparison questions um and then each test has like different test modes so that is one thing that i really like about any type of prep but especially grad prep preps um course is you can do it in like a full test mode where you know like you take it you go to the library you take your, your laptop and then you are like you're there in the test mode and you're there's no like oh you got this one wrong or it is um it's explaining to you why this one's wrong and why this one's right it's nothing like that um but then you also do have like your learner mode where it does just that which is very important because a lot of test taking and tests and studying for your exams any of them because i you know i had to do this when i was taking my pants is understanding why the correct answer is correct and why the wrong answer is wrong and so 
just keep that in mind when you're trying to figure out what mode you're going to study in because you can change it up from week to week and month to month depending on how long you're studying so i had 60 days technically i would have been studying for two months so maybe in the first month it was all learner mode that i was doing and in the second month i can change my study plan up so where i'm doing it in the full test mode okay um i just wanted to go to these like three little chevrons here so it has your study plan which I think is what I was on. Let me go to my stats. So it shows that I completed the one practice test, um, but I haven't, oh, there's another practice. I haven't taken the other practice test, right? So I completed like the free one. Oh, look, see, there it is. So it tells you what you did. So on April 13th, I got one out of six in the quantitative reasoning and two out of six in verbal. Not not looking good for me if I was gonna be taking the GRE. Thank God I don't have to take that ever again in my life, okay? Not everybody is a good test taker and that's why these study plans are kind of important and really beneficial for you because it helps you um, kind of just get into m the mode of taking exams and see kind of the tricks of the trade on how to study for these exams and prepare yourself for these exams. So just saying all right let's go to the practice test so again it shows you the seven and then it's it shows you the sample all right so let's just go to practice test number one now um here it comes up with a bunch of instructions for you it tells you about the the test so you do have analytical um in involved in this practice test as well as quantitative and verbal reasoning you have uh 40 questions for each and it's broken up into different um sections but 30 minutes for each section when it comes to verbal and 35 for quantitative now i haven't really so i haven't done like obviously the gre in a long time but at the same time i don't remember when I was studying that these like prep programs had an analytical section. So I find that pretty interesting because it would be interesting to see like how they're testing or like how they're grading these analytical questions because it is writing, right? Um, and I, I remember like I had a book and I was just practicing my writing skills with respect to the analytical section, but I couldn't really grade myself like there wasn't really a way of like grading myself in the analytical section so that is interesting and i think that that is this is actually a benefit to have um when you're doing this specifically for all of like your gre like grad school stuff now let's say you are applying to pa school i like to be completely honest the analytical section does not matter that much honestly okay like what matters a lot is your quantitative section because again that is like your math and science area it shows like how you can like think at a higher level i guess you could say and then verbal reasoning um is just beneficial because it boosts your overall gre score okay all right so it goes into explaining how to take the test um and then scoring the test so total questions 82 which is your 40 your 40 um split up into like 20 and 20 and then your um your 60 questions for your two analytical split up into 30 and 30. All right, so here are the three different modes. Simulation where um, you have the timer, okay? It's gonna end when it ends, that's it. You have the practice where it's it's not time, like the timer will display, but it's not like enforced. So you're gonna be able to just go through and that is good so you can see exactly like how long, how much time you're spending on each test question. And then the learner mode, which is the mode that I think uh, really everybody should start out in because it's very much like okay this is why you got this wrong okay so let's just go into the learner mode because i know i'm gonna get a bunch of things wrong so <laughs> let's just get into it we're gonna do a couple questions and then go from there all right let's do it okay all right so i'm gonna skip through the analytical stuff because like you're not gonna want to see me writing so let's see go to that and i guess that's pretty good that you can go through um, and like jump through the different things. Again, more instructions here. Um, all right, let's see what this says. It's, uh, oh, we're trying to figure out the different quantities. So where does the, where does A start and, and end and where does B start and end? Okay, negative times negative equals a positive. So that's 15 times a negative equals a negative. That's 30 minus so first off like i don't even know what i'm i'm looking at is that 
is that 30 minus 32? So it's 30 minus 32. So with negative two, is that what we're, is that where we're at? And then I'm looking at the negative nine and, and eight. I have no, so whatever, I don't know what. I First, so this is like one thing, right? So I think that grad prep is initially like very much good for desktop. So maybe if I was looking at this on my desktop, it would be a whole lot easier to like disseminate like what is what, like where quantity B starts and end and where quantity A starts and end. But since I cannot like differentiate that, I don't know what's going on. I'm gonna just pick B is greater and I'm gonna check my answer and look! I was... <laughs> Guys, I was correct! <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay, so I know I was correct and it was like a complete guess, but nonetheless, your girl got it right, so I'm gonna go with that. All right, but um, it goes on to explain why, why quantity B is greater. If you were to choose A, it tells you exactly why that is incorrect. And, you know, because this is quantitative, so there is an actual, like, here is the answer. You know, like, we've gone through the, the math of it. This is the answer, so it tells you why. So that's good. Um, and then I like this here where it talks about, like, what the topic, the overall topic is, which is arithmetic, so it's math. And then the subtopic, which is integers. So again, consider the following system maybe we can solve for y like guys i honestly don't have time to go through this let's just go with a is greater and let's see the answer might be b plus, uh, substitute for since 10 plus 20 y equals 24 must be 14. all right so you just have to go through and do that okay so that would be that it, again it tells you the topic subtopic and then details in terms of like what you're looking at which is good so you can go back with any other because this is all testing, right? So if you are studying for your exam with like learn going through like different math topics, um, this is very, very beneficial to kind of test your knowledge, okay? This is not, I wouldn't say that this is something that you just use solely as the only thing that you're using to study for the GRA because it really isn't about quote unquote studying, it's about practicing, like taking these questions, which is I guess a form of studying, right? But at the same time, it's practicing for these the questions and for the topics that you've already been studying for. So just keep that in mind. All right, so let me see, I don't know, let's see, what is this? Notes, um, okay, so here maybe I can jump to verbal. Yeah, so this is good. So this little like Q is I guess for the questions overall in the section. So you can jump to a particular section that you want. So let me just jump to the verbal section um, and we can do a verbal question just to kind of see how that one is. All right, so this is a long paragraph. I'm gonna read it. You have to kind of put in um, the right terminology. So if you are not like a native English speaker, then spending time in the verbal section would be beneficial for you in terms of learning words, what they say, um, what they mean, that kind of thing, how to pronounce them, like the roots and stuff, because it will help you just better understand like where they should fit. Now, although I am a native English speaker, <laughs> I still may not know. <laughs> where these words fit, but that does not matter, okay? We're still gonna go through it. All right, the up and coming director received almost unquestioning praise and affection from most viewers, reviewers, but one critic deviated from the majority view. Okay, so let's do affection, deviate. Uh, because I, you know, moves so far. She claimed that the director's first two movies were largely r representative of earlier film filmmakers' works. They were, she no wrote, nothing more than thinly disguised rehashes. Oh, okay. Were largely, I would say, representative, derivative of, I, I feel like you would have to put a derivative of but you know like for that sentence to make sense but let's go with that and let's see so <laughs> so everything is wrong okay so it, not everything is wrong um let's see answer blank one okay so 
The correct answers are audulation deviated from an derivative. Oh, so, I mean that, okay, sorry you guys. So the derivative part, I guess, was, but to me that doesn't make sense. She claimed that the director's first two movies were largely derivative of an, okay, whatever. I would say were largely a derivative of, but I guess, you know, we're still not like, maybe I'm not the grammar police here and so I don't really know that. And so this test is teaching me something that I should, um, I guess, keep in mind when speaking or writing um adulation i just didn't know what it meant anyway so all right now i know let's move on to the next one unfortunately the op-ed in the newspaper was a little more than bitter something against the governor it was both overly harsh and uh, acerbic acerbic the writer made no effort to be impartial rather he something every achievement of the governor's tenure in essence claiming that she accomplished nothing belittled all right unfortunately the op-ed in the newspaper was a little more than a bitter analysis let's say that okay so another thing that i'm noticing here is on my phone, it's a little bit more difficult to actually make these choices. So you have to be very, very, is it polemic? I knew it was gonna be that. I, I, in my head, I was like, Adana, choose polemic, but I didn't do it, y'all. Anyway, so you're gonna be able to kind of see that and make those decisions anyways. But like I was saying, it's a little bit difficult to actually like make these choices. Obviously, I don't wanna complete this test because I don't want my overall grade to be like trash. But I mean, already I've only gotten, what, one out of three questions that I've already taken, four questions that I've taken wrong. So <laughs> already I'm at like a 25%. So, you know, gonna keep that in mind moving forward. But oh, like down here, so I've scrolled down and it shows you all of the products that they have, GRE, GMAT, LSAT, and MCAT. So if you're planning on taking any of those courses, like this is a good prep for you. Um, like I stated, it is very much for you to test yourself, not use as your only source of studying. Although having this learner mode does make it very, very easy for you to kind of learn the, specifically like with the the actual like verbal reasoning part obviously if you're going to the quantitative section you have to go through write those questions down kind of look where you got like the math wrong but this gives you everything that you need with respect to like why something is wrong for the second blank the clue overly harsh has a negative con connotation so therefore like if you're eloquent is not right right that's more positive um, and insufficient is negative. It's just not the right connotation. So it tells you everything that you need to know when you're making these choices. Um, so I, I like it. Okay. I like it. It's good. You can use it for, um, learning new words and learning new, um, I would say problems or ways how to to solve these problems when it comes to your quantitative section, but I would not use it as your only source. Like that is my own thing. I like, don't put all your eggs in one basket. I like to like kind of cherry pick my learning and, and what I'm doing with respect to, to studying. Um, and I think having different avenues, like things that is just solely teaching you a particular process and then being able to test it but then also at the same time see like that process is beneficial and that is where grad prep comes in handy okay so if you are ready to take your GRE or you're planning on taking your GRE and you're looking for additional grad prep check grad prep out okay you guys um they're go that you can go to just gradprep.com and test out do the sample test which is free and see if it's really something that you want to invest in and if it is then you know you can get the hundred dollars for all seven of the tests that they offer or and actually it's 99 dollars 95 cents just keeping that in mind so under a hundred dollars for all of the seven tests or um you can a la carte the test and that option is also there for you okay so hopefully this was helpful
helpful. I hope you guys are doing well in this process of applying to PA school. I hope you're making great choices and I wish you nothing but blessings and the best um, on your current application cycle. I hope you all get into the schools of your choice. If you have any questions for me, leave them in the comment section below. If you have any questions about grad prep, leave them in the comment section below as well because I will direct you to where you need to go. Don't forget to like this video, follow me on Instagram at on the PA and on Instagram at Get That C University, where we help you not only get into but through PA school. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time. 